Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today, well, it's part 10. We've gone nine parts up until now in the How I Retouch Photoshop tutorial series, and it all stemmed from a tutorial I did a little while ago where I just did like an overview of the steps that I take to retouch an image and then exploded each of those steps out into an individual tutorial. And today we're going to be talking about some of the benefits of non or of not of non-destructive, but of destructive editing and creating sort of a catch-all layer once you've sort of done the bulk of the retouching to your image. What if there's still a couple little things you notice need to just be tweaked or knocked out or adjusted that you really want to do? Well, this is where this idea of this catch-all layer comes into play, and it's the one time where I'm really willing to go and make destructive changes to an image that I'm retouching and feel good about it. Before we talk about it, though, I'm selling a course all about how to retouch images over on tutvid.com. There's a link right there in the video you can check out. It'd be cool if you pick up a copy. If not, hey, plenty of free tutorials here, too. And I love you all the same. So, destructive editing and a catch-all layer. So here, it's pretty simple. Create a new layer. I'm just going to name it catch-all. And I am going to go over my image kind of with a fine-tooth comb. So I'm going to zoom in to 100%, uh, maybe even a little bit more. And what I like to do is, well, maybe even create a layer above the catch-all layer and just call this notes. Grab your brush tool. Set the opacity of the brush tool to about 100%. Maybe we'll grab just a little three pixel brush like that just for the sake of making it look pretty I'm gonna turn on pen pressure because I'm using my tablet so we can just make it look nice uh, that's great um, and I'll go blue so it's something that really contrasts against uh, my background alright so like I wanna knock out that little flagpole that's a little annoying there's a little sensor spot right there that we missed uh, do, 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 do. Did you get anything else alright so there you can still see a color spot on her skin right can you see that and also right there, maybe right there and there as well, just slightly, slightly not what they should be. We didn't really retouch her dress, but there's a little spot there. Uh, it's difficult to see because the blue, maybe we'll actually make it yellow because yellow I think will stick out everywhere. A couple little spots right there. A uh, couple almost where like a texture repeats there on her forehead. We'll just catch that stuff. Do, do, do. What else do we see? Anything else? I think it, all the rest looks good, but almost always there's going to be just a couple things. I'm just going to invert the color to make it yellow, so there we go. Just Command-I, by the way, just flip the blue to yellow. All right, so there's always going to be a couple things that you miss, or almost always. Um, so that's what this catch-all layer is for. So I go down to the catch-all layer. I'm going to start with this flagpole down here, and I typically will just use my healing brush. So I go healing brush, and I say, hey, look, sample current and below, and then go ahead, alt, and hold down your alt key, sample what you like. And, uh, you know, most of these heal, the, the, most of these little things, you don't even really need a tablet or anything for. Uh, they're all going to be relatively simple. Boom, there we go. We got the first one. Great. Let's go up here and get this little stupid sensor spot, which is always annoying when you miss, you know, one sensor spot or five sensor spots or whatever. Uh, all right, up here where it looks like a pattern is kind of uh, displaying up here in the forehead. Again, I'm, I'm, I know I'm breaking a rule here. I'm working with a soft-edged healing brush. Let's just see what it looks like. See, that just that looks really bad when I do that. If I just lightly... Nope, I need a hard-edged healing brush. All right, let's right-click. Increase the hardness. There we go. Cool. Uh, make the healing brush a little smaller. Go in here. I'm just looking to just mix up the... Uh, basically mix up the, uh, the, the textures, if you will. There we go. Cool. Mix that up. And I don't know if this top one is going to stick out quite as much now that we kind of corrected the bigger issue down on the bottom. Uh, that's probably good. In fact, if I zoom out, yeah, it looks a lot better. It makes her forehead look a lot smoother. All right, let's go back to what we were looking at. All right, so we got some light spots here in her dress. Let's just uh, sample and get rid of them. All right, that looks good there over here. Got this little spot here, so I'm going to sample in the shadows there. Get rid of that. So you can see, I mean, it's all just, you know, it's it's fairly basic stuff that you're going over and getting rid of. Uh, let's do this here. Select this. Just go over her skin here. Oh, you know what? Let's set it back to the blend mode of normal. That might help as well. Uh, I am going to decrease the hardness, but you just saw I me. Mean, we did all of those corrections with it set to uh, replace the, the mode. We had it set to replace, and it worked well for what we were doing. In fact, replace is probably the best way to get rid of sensor spots when you have a solid color background like the sky, like a you know a gray background in studio, something like that. Healing brush set to replace tends to work pretty well. All right, let's go here and just try to change the color. It just needs to be changed ever so slightly to make it kind of match the skin around it again. But we don't want to introduce texture that was not there. That is kind of important. There we go. Cool. Over here, this one's this one's really noticeable. We're going to come into here. Swap a Ruski. 
Great. Was there anything else down her arm that we missed? I don't think so. All right, let's zoom out. I think that's it, right? I think that is everything, yes. So that, that's the importance. That's why I like to go and just circle stuff that needs to be changed because then I don't miss anything later on when I actually do all the healing. I can delete the notes layer. We have our catch-all layer. Now, this obviously is very destructive editing because it's just there on a layer. I can turn it on, turn it off. We are fundamentally changing the pixels of the image. But because we've done pretty much everything we want to do to it, uh, you see, part of the reason, by the way, this is an issue is if we like, went back to color grading and decided we wanted this to be a very blue image, we would have these spots that stick out, right? The flag sticks out, the sensor spot sticks out, her arm really looks bad. So that's why this is one of the last things that I do is go over and do all the catch-all stuff. And again, ideally, yeah, you would have done it all way back here on blemish removal, but sometimes you miss stuff. And if, it, if you have missed stuff, just know, create a catch-all layer. You haven't destroyed your entire image. You have to go back and redo everything. No, catch-all layers are beautiful. So the catch-all layer in Photoshop and fine-tuning and tweaking and cleaning up, doing a little housekeeping, if you will, to your photo in Photoshop, that's what we covered in this tutorial, and that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Henry David Thoreau said that every generation laughs at the old fashions, but religiously follows the new ones. Is there a trend or a style or a design technique that you think has never gone out of style or that won't go out of style? Let me know in the comments below. Also, hit the like button for this video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Boom, a link just appeared right up there. When you sign up, I'll send you 30 free tips and tricks all about how to work faster in Photoshop. You're absolutely going to love it. You can follow me on Snapchat. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And until next time, I'll catch you later.